I'd like to go ahead and bring the public hearing for the uh, section of the Warrington Board of Alderman meeting uh, in session. Uh, Jack Hannap. Good evening, Mayor and Board. <coughs> Good evening. This is a site plan approval request, SP 120, for the Warrington Commons. On October 3rd, 2017, a request was filed for site plan approval for commercial development, including a snook store, to be located at 499 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. The property is zoned C3 Highway Commercial. Motion for approval passed 9 to 0 with one absent at the January 4th, 2018 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting with the condition of changing the siding and adding sidewalks on the driveway from North Highway 47 for applicable. I'd like to make part of the public hearing record the municipal code by reference, my planning and zoning report, and the public hearing notices, and per the instructions of City Attorney Greville language uh, regarding the siding was removed from the proposed ordinance uh, due to uh, the city has no authority of that during the site plan section of the review that would be addressed during specific building permit application to make sure it meets city code. Excellent. And the applicants are here if you have any specific questions for them. Right. Thank you. Questions? Sign Yeah. You know, like yeah, right, come back to the question of the sidewalks because my understanding is it was just a recommendation <coughs> by the government. It was a recommendation, yeah, and not only myself but um, Guy Geavers, Director of Public Works, we went out there on the site, physically looked at it, and where that egress strip is coming in, it's basically the width of the, st right. the strip within two or three feet is already all existing pavement. And on the north, you have Taco Bell's drive through lane, and on the south, you have a retaining wall for Walgreens, so it's not really practical. Uh, there is existing sidewalk there currently where you can come down 47, hook around the corner, and come up Veterans Memorial to where they show the proposed sidewalks coming into the site. So I believe the existing sidewalks would take care of all the requirements. Yeah, because it didn't, if you go out there, it doesn't, it doesn't seem practical to require <coughs> sidewalks within development because that easement, like you said, and let's Taco Bell's we're willing to give up their their drive-through space, or or we can get the pharmacy to give up part of their space. <coughs> it just doesn't seem practical to not have a drive or a sidewalk for the hundred and or two hundred feet or whatever that length is. It just doesn't make sense. Like especially when there's existing sidewalk on 47 and right. veterans to go right to the site. So since that was a recommendation, it never would have been in the ordinance. Is that my understanding? Um, with regards to the sidewalk. material? Sidewalk. To the sidewalk. So in other words, the question was, I don't know what, you, I understand what you do with a, a requirement that P&Z puts on that that's something they want, but when they make a recommendation, that's kind of a nebulous statement. So what does that mean? Their approval with the conditions they recommended you guys can take it or leave it. It doesn't require anything but a regular vote. You can address it in the motion or the ordinance, depending on how you guys want to handle it, if that answers the question. It's just a recommendation. The sidewalk is included as a condition in the ordinance that's on for tonight, if that's your question. Yeah, because I was trying to understand what the difference was between their siding issue or construction issue versus the sidewalk. It sounded like one was something they wanted, one was something, uh, you know, if it's applicable. So I didn't know if they had the same weight under the, the ordinance. That the way it was presented, they were presented as conditions, so they have a, the same weight, which okay. is recommendations, you know, to include it as part of the re the site plan ordinance. What would be the uh, what would be the best way to clean it up? Well, you could somebody if if an, if somebody wants to make a motion to approve the ordinance, they could make a motion to approve the ordinance striking the condition recommended by planning okay. as owner. As the amendment several times before. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you could do it in the original motion, or you could do a motion to approve it, and then 
as the mayor pointed out, do it as an amendment to the motion to approve. Destroy. I'll leave that to the mayor as far as how he wants to handle the procedural. Any other questions from Jack? No. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. At this time, any, anybody from the public would like to speak just specifically on that, uh, the, I guess it's the SP 120 in the Community Improvement District. I mean, I'll just speak briefly on behalf of the petitioner. My name is Robert Clark with Armstrong Teasdale. Uh, here with me this evening uh, from Schnooks is Steve Heights and Mike Osbaugh, as well as Franklin Sears from the Desco Group and Dave Van Leer from Cochrane. Um, obviously, we're here in favor of both the petition for the Community Improvement District and the petition for site plan approval. Have a presentation that we're happy to give, but we'll defer that to the uh, when the bills are actually considered. And we'll answer any questions after the public hearing as the board would like us to. Yeah, I <coughs> believe you're, you're slated a little later on. Right. Anyone else? Jack, you covered both of these, correct? Not that I'm aware of. Then come on up and give the second one. <laughs> that was Rob. Mr. Clark, he was the one that did the Commons Improvement District. For the public hearing? Yes. Okay. Mr. Clark. Yeah, I'll speak to that very briefly, and again, we'll, we'll cover it in our presentation before the bill, but um, to the extent that we were the petitioner for the creation of the Community Improvement District, we worked with the city clerk to make sure that the appropriate notices were both uh, mailed to the owners within the district, which is obviously Schnooks, and then also published uh, twice a week in advance of the public hearings required by state law. We provided all the affidavits of publication in the city. They have those for the record, so that would be part of the record that they've already got. So. Any questions before he steps down about the improvement district? Okay, thank you. Would anybody from the public like to speak on the Warrington Commons Community Improvement District? If so, please step to the podium, state your name, and we'll give you five minutes to speak. <coughs> Not seeing one, we'll move on to uh, closing the public hearing section for the Warrington Board of Aldermen meeting for Tuesday, January 16, 2018. We will open the regular Board of Aldermen meeting. If you would please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next item would be the consent agenda. <coughs> we have the regular meeting minutes from January 2nd, 2018. We have the work session minutes from January 9th, 2018 with MoDOT regarding the pedestrian safety along Highway 47. We have approval for the following stormwater projects to be completed by Public Works. The west side of Dryden Street from <coughs> East Oak to, to the <coughs> alley in the amount of $3,289 and the budget amount was $3,300. Steinhagen Road to Niehaus Avenue in the amount of $4,044. The budget amount was $4,100. And the east side of Northwest Street from West Oak Street to West Boonslick Road in the amount of $3,447. The budget amount was $3,500. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Deloy. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shellharmy? Yes. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. <coughs> Next item on the agenda would be hearing from the public. As to if you have anything you'd like to discuss or talk about, please come to the podium, state your name, and we'll give you five minutes to speak on it. <coughs> All right, not seeing anyone, move on to the Board of Alderman comments. Anybody from the board? All right. Next will be the mayor's comments, and I'm going to tell you, um, I was quite impressed with as many people showed up for our uh, workshop meeting with MoDOT. Um, to me, it showed that the community cared. Um, nobody went too negative, um, which was much appreciated because uh, 
we have to work with them, not against them. And, and the community showed that they wanted to work with them. And uh, got some big news out of there, and, and I was pretty happy and impressed. I believe uh, Dr. Tatmeyer impressed all of us with uh, with what he's set up for a donation of property to try and get this thing going. And that was quite impressive for me, at least. And uh, just shows that a lot of people are wanting this community to grow forward. And I'm, I'm happy to see it. Next on the agenda would be the Warrington Commons <coughs> Community Improvement District. <coughs> Mr. Clark. I'll have you step to the podium again. <laughs> Should I give you a front row? <coughs> Actually, got just a couple slides related to this. So. Is it the same one from the public hearing notice? No, it's actually not. It's yeah. not just for the community. Just for clarification, um, presentation will be applied to a bill that's later on the agenda. Correct. Right. I don't know the Which one, Rob? It's the PowerPoint. Yeah. Good evening. Once again, Robert Clark with Armstrong T. <coughs> here on behalf of the Petitioner Shook's Markets <coughs> Inc., uh, which is the petitioner proposing the formation of a community improvement district. Um, the petition was filed in accordance with uh, Missouri law, has been verified by the um, city clerk. Uh, we provided the requisite notices of the public hearing today. And this is just a brief overview of the community <coughs> improvement district. Um, essentially, uh, as you all uh, likely know, the Community Improvement District is um, a separate entity formed to fund certain public infrastructure improvements, um, in this case within the uh, proposed site of the development of the Schnooks Market and the additional retail, which will total about 79,000 square feet. Uh, it will fund those improvements solely through an additional sales tax of up to 1% within the boundaries of that area, so just those retail establishments <coughs> within that site. Um, the uh, property owner will advance all of the costs of those public infrastructures. There's no obligation whatsoever on the part of the city with respect to any of those costs. Uh, and those costs will be reimbursed solely out of the proceeds of the sales tax revenue generated within that development. Um, per the petition, we're estimating the costs um, of the public infrastructure to be approximately $2,500,000. Um, that is uh, substantially less than what was contemplated when we entered into a development agreement with the city uh, several months ago. Um, that's uh, based on a number of factors with respect to the design and the uh, uh, construction costs that have come in. <coughs> um, there is uh, no obligation, as we had said, for the city to pay anything with regard to the public infrastructure. Um, Schnooks will bear the risk of recovery if the sales tax are sufficient to uh, pay. Um, we expect that the district will be in place for up to about 25 years, depending upon when the second phase, which is the additional retail, is completed and the costs associated with that infrastructure are complete. Um, once uh, the district has paid all of the costs associated with the improvements, um, it will uh, repeal the tax and the district will be abolished. Happy to answer any questions with regard to the Community Improvement District this time. At what point is is the tax rate that's going to be finally decided up to one percent? When is that determined? <coughs> is that voted on by the members of the district board? It, it is. That's correct. Once the district is approved, um, which we hope will be this evening, then the board of directors <coughs> will be convened. The board of directors is provided for in the ordinance. Um, it consists of 
uh, representatives of uh, the uh, property owner as well as uh, I think city representatives so the city will obviously have notice of any um, decisions made by that board and we'll have a, a say in that but we would expect that the board meeting would likely be within the next um, several weeks once the, the district is actually formed by ordinance. Is the dollar amount capped at one uh, two point one or is it, it, it at two million five hundred thousand it would okay. be um, we would need to come back okay. to this board to amend the petition and expand the amount uh, in the future if there were some okay. need to do so but we don't anticipate that to be the case it's size based upon what we have a pretty good handle will be the public infrastructure costs and what will take to uh, repay that over time any other questions any other questions? No, here. Question. Question. Oh, it's on, on the construction, but I can, should that be done now or later? You can do it now. Uh, you mentioned that the snook store is going to be built first and then additional uh, uh, buildings at a later date. Is that <coughs> That's correct. Currently, um, while there's been discussions with other potential retailers, there's not a, a definitive uh, deal worked out, so the snooks will go ahead. Uh, you know, presumably we have site plan approval. The Schnucks will go ahead very quickly this year, with the hope of being open uh, for the holidays of this year. Depending upon when you know something is arranged with another retailer, then <coughs> they'll follow in some period thereafter. Okay. So you'll just get the pad ready. And you won't. You know, I'll, I'll defer to the engineers on exactly <coughs> how the phase and what site work will be done up front versus what will be done. You know, once we know exactly what the the retailer is. Uh, obviously, there's some general grading that I imagine will all be done at once, but I'm not sure if the actual pad will be done if we don't know exactly what the footprint will be. I'll, I'll defer to those folks when we give the site plan presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Once again, to reiterate, that'll be a bill later on in, on the agenda. <coughs> Next item will be the participation <coughs> in the <coughs> college initiative. I'm going to let. Mayor. Yes. Were you going to allow to be able to discuss the site plan at this point? We can. Along with the same agenda item before It'd probably we be on. best to do that. I, I know that it was, we were going to, it's also up for Jack, whenever Jack was speaking, I think the site plan was Are you gonna do cited it then? for that. Okay. But we can do it now. That's fine. Okay. Well, then I'm, I'm going to actually uh, <laughs> turn it over to, uh, um, first we'll have, uh, Dave Van Leer with Cochrane Engineering uh, to go over the site plan and then Mike Alspaugh from Schnooks will talk a little bit about the um, the architectural, the elevations and so forth and then <coughs> we'll answer any questions there. Thank you. Um, I'm David Van Leer from Cochrane here on behalf of the applicant tonight. Um, Travis Dean, you guys can still see you kind of walking through the, the site plan. Don't get too far away from the mic because they won't be able to hear you on the audio though. Is that all right by saying here? That's fine. <coughs> We've okay. actually got it up here. Um, We've got it in front of us. <coughs> what we're looking at here is um, phase one of the site. Uh, kind of help you get oriented. Uh, north is up on the screen. I-70 runs along the top of the page. Uh, 47 running north and south. And then veterans at the bottom of the screen. Uh, this would be auto zone right here. Walgreens and Taco Bell right here. Um, the site plan we submitted, we do believe, complies with city code. Um, we're requesting ac two access points off of Veterans, and also an access point connecting to the existing drive off of 47. Um, we have signage located in three locations, uh, signage out along the interstate, signage on Veterans, and then also signage <coughs> at the entrance off of 47. Uh, phasing was discussed a little bit. Um, this is the phase one site plan here. Um, flip one page. Um, this is the full build out site plan. Um, the property is being graded to accommodate a development, full development similar to this. Um, initial initial construction will <coughs> what you see on this page as far as surface improvements. Can I raise a question? So yeah, on the on the uh, access and egress off off of the uh, South Service Road, are, um, are those curb cuts already there? So MoDOT's already approved 
both of those? <coughs> um, they are not there currently. Um, approval for access off this portion of Veterans is by the City of Warrington. Okay. We took that over the phase, okay. uh, one of the phases of right. the so. Okay. Um, generally, the, this site plan depicts 165 <coughs> parking spaces for the Chinooks and 142 parking spaces for the future retail. Stormwater from the development is handled through two basins, a stormwater retention basins, one basin located in this location, and a second basin located to the rear of Chinooks. Um, we have submitted landscaping and lighting and photometric plans, which comply with city code. I think that was all on the site plan that I wanted to specifically point out. I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Well, tell your uh, excavating contractor I'm amazed at how uh, quickly they're making that uh, look like the project that you've uh, presented before us. Uh, I guess I've been known to be a fair weather excavator, so tell them if they see a blue Ford truck out there, not to not to think I'm uh, undermining them or critical of what they're doing. It's just very impressive with the what, uh, work they're getting done. The other thing that struck me is how deep that ravine is out there. And the retention basins that you've designed into this are really going to help <coughs> with the uh, stormwater runoff that starts really uh, up off of 47 and all goes to the to the west there and it really ends up down past Denny's in the tribute to the Veterans Memorial. So uh, the, the uh, contractor has certainly not let the weather slow them down. I think one, one thing also to get to your point, um, a couple people asked me, well, why does this project deserve the, the district like we're putting in? And the explanation is that you're not building on a flat piece of ground that you have ravines, you have uh, topography issues that have to be dealt with. So to really develop this area, regardless of who's coming in, it's going to require some initial investment that's not typical as if you were to build, let's say, on the corner lot where, where Walgreens was or other places in the community. So it's, it's something that's unique about the property, not who's coming in, not who the developer is, but it's unique about the pro project that qualifies it for the special tax consideration. And that's really what the, the district's about in my mind. Yeah. Any other questions or comments about the site plan? No. <coughs> All right, thank you. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Alspaw. I'm with um, Schnook's corporate office in the engineering department. And tonight I'm excited to give you a little sneak peek of our design of our, of our supermarket that we're excited to build in Warrington. So with that said, we're going to start with the exterior elevations. Um, so this is the uh, east elevation of our proposed store. And as you can see, um, our main focus is on our, our center um, gable entrance, you know, so we can highlight our store signage with a single entrance and exit. Uh, one of the other things that we've done at this store <coughs> is we've tried to do a lot of uh, clear story windows across the front on the east elevation and also on the south elevation facing Veterans Memorial in order to get that natural light, you know, into our store. We think that's really important for our customers. Um, also on the storefront, um, we're, we're proposing, and, and what we're showing here is uh, stone veneer across the entire front um, to give it a, 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 a different look. Um, so this is our, again, this is our east elevation. Um, going to our south elevation, uh, we're also sh proposing another sign right on Veterans Memorial Parkway as you enter from this uh, particular uh, direction. And again, as I mentioned a while ago, the clear story windows all the way across the side because we do want that natural light to flow in throughout the uh, entire building. So, so those are our elevations for the building. Now I'm going to take you a little journey into the inside of it so you can get a feel for what the design looks like as you enter the store. Um, one of the things that, that we're focusing on right here, this is a bird's eye view of, of what the design looks like. Um, right here, this, that's the, the single uh, entrance and exit. 
and we're going to be walking right into um, our fresh department. So one of the focus of, the, of our store here is that we're really going to focus on fresh. Um, so we'll be uh, entering right into a, um, a large produce department, fresh produce, and then into floral, bakery in the corner, follow through through the deli departments into um, a service meat and seafood department, and as you travel through the store, then the fresh meat, smoked meat department, coming around to dairy in the back uh, right rear corner, frozen um, dairy runs down the side as well, and then frozen food is a separate department right in the front before going through front checkouts and before you exit. So that's just kind of a bird's eye view of how the store is looking. So these are some uh, artist renderings of, of what the store looks like right as you enter the store. So we're walking right into our fresh um, produce department. Um, obviously it's going to look much better when we get uh, product in here than just the bare fixtures, but it'll give you an idea of, of what we're proposing. Uh, you're going to walk right into a, a florist department um, with self-service floral. Again, a, a large fresh produce department right as you enter. Looking to the right, <coughs> um, a fresh bakery department right in the front corner where we'll be baking fresh in-store donut program and so forth. Uh, going into um, prepared foods, which we're going to have hot rotisserie chickens, a wing bar, um, fried chicken, that type of product. Going into prepared foods, prepared salads, um, slicing deli, um, and cheeses all along this front side right here. There will be an open concept looking back into the, into the kitchen area, you know, so you know, there's, there's transparency there. Um, this is another view as you walk farther down on the main aisle, looking back towards that deli department. Again, the bakery in the front um, right corner. Um, we're also going to have, um, and I didn't mention this when I was looking at the exterior elevations, but the, the windows on the front of the elevation on the right are going to be windows looking into a cafe seating area uh, for our customers to, to dine in, you know, after they, they get their grab and go product. On the front wall, it's kind of off the, the image here, but to the right, we have grab and go um, uh, cases where we can do you know prepared salads and beverages and sandwiches and so forth. Pay at, at the bus register right here, and then a cafe seating if, if, if our customers choose to dine in. So this elevation is showing the the, the bakery in the front uh, right corner, going into our hot to go product, and then our deli department department with uh, cheeses on this wall right here. As we continue on that main journey down in the fresh aisle, as you can see, we're going to have a, a service meat and seafood department, and that's going to be in the back uh, right-hand corner of the store. They'll be side by side to service our customers. As we make the turn around the corner, we'll have fresh meats and smoked meats all the way along the back aisle here followed by the dairy department in, in the back uh, right-hand corner and, and then frozen food in the front uh, um, left corner of the store. And then, thank you for shopping with us as we make our way out. Questions? <coughs> Is this more, I know I'm familiar with Washington, Lake St. Louis, and Winsville probably, or those stores. Which one is it most comparable to? Or it looks like it might be totally different from any of them. It's going to be the same look and the same decor of Lake St. Louis. Lake St. Louis. Okay, yeah, Winslow was done with a different look. It was done previous to this. So this has our new concept and our new looks in it. Um, we got our graphics are kind of a wood look material with, you know, as you see, um, <coughs> printing on it. Here's a Subway sandwich where it says grab and go on the front wall. So this is our latest look for all of our stores. And what's the total square footage? Um, this is 37,000. 37,000. Yeah. Looks nice. Real nice. <coughs> okay. Thank Any you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll move on to the next item, which will be the uh, <coughs> participation in the local college initiative. <coughs> so we'll let any of them that would like to lead off? Anybody want? Uh, nobody else. 
else wants to know. Well, um, after listening to uh, what is being proposed, I guess the first thing that that uh, I noticed is that what we are hearing is more that the businesses and manufacturers here locally are looking for trade and votech training, which I don't believe that's at least what I understand uh, Representative Spencer uh, was proposing. But more than that, I think that as you see here this evening, the city of Warrington and our staff have really got a full plate right now. Um, we've got a lot of projects going and more coming and I guess from where I stand I think we need to stay in our own lane I think you have a number of uh, public entities <coughs> who are considering tax increases uh, and some that don't know whether they're going to propose them or not and it seems to me that it, that we don't need to be encouraging tax increases when it's really not what we were elected to do in the, in the area of education. Uh, I'd like to look to the school district, both uh, Warren R3 and Warren R2, to study the issue. And if they feel that there is a proposal that they want to move forward with and want us to be involved either in the way of making available to the property for the project uh, or just asking for <coughs> our support, uh, I would rather see us move in that direction. So. Anyone else? I've said all I wanted to say about it the last two go-arounds with it and I, I just think that the uh, city should have um, the residents I think should uh, should have a uh, somebody representing the city on that uh, if nothing else for informational purposes you know so that's all I'm, I'm finished with it I still think the mayor should appoint somebody to that to that commission, I, I don't know if you want to bring it to a vote. Oh, What's your yeah, call? Yeah, we're going to put it to a vote. I, I believe since we've opened it up so publicly and let the alderman weigh in on it, I believe we need to put it to a vote. But just want to make sure nobody else has anything to say on it. All right. Uh, entertain a motion to have a representative for their participation in local college initiative. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schill Harvey. Seconded by Alderman Rock. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz? No. Alderman Schill Harvey? Yes. Alderman Costello? No. Alderman Rock? No. Alderman Miller? No. Alderman Delloy? No. Five five no's, the one yes. The uh, the the uh, motion is denied, or I guess no, Thanks. and then negative. Next item will be the North Highway 47 Sidewalk Engineering and Action Plan. <coughs> well, having sat through <coughs> the meeting with the public, which was very impressive. Um, <coughs> I left the meeting coming with a couple realizations. Um, I think we want to work with MoDOT everywhere we can, but the reality, I think, based on comments made, that this is, if we're going to do this and do it successfully, in my mind, it has to be totally a local project. That doesn't mean we can't apply for grants or funding where they are, but we have to approach this project like we approach the, the interstate, uh, the overpass and say this is something we need to do in the community because we, we know that we've been told it's not on their five-year plan 
We know what the politically it's like to get even those road projects moved up through the Wunslick Regional Group that looks at road studies throughout the area. We don't have the political clout to move it from not being on the plan up to being a high priority on the plan. And I would like to, in addition to put the action plan in, to see if we could have the engineers <coughs> look at the project that would say, what does it kind of cost us to just do the, do the project and get it over with? You know, and if we need to scale back, we can. But I think there's, in my thinking, there's sufficient community support to say, let's just fix it and get it over. Let's just do it. And that would be one of the charges that we would ask the engineering firm to look at. And then we can deal with that. Uh, the action plan that was presented by Terry that we've all seen has a lot of different things going on, trying to take advantage of the momentum created by the donations, trying to get engineering funding where we can and all these <coughs> things. But I think from my perspective, I think we need to look at this as a very serious project. It has to be a priority project for the city and we have to figure out as a board how to lead this so we can get it accomplished. That's where I'm at. I think, uh, you know, if, if, <coughs> if, if this comes to fruition and we decide to go forward with it, uh, all of the the other sidewalk uh, plans will probably be put, need to be put on hold for a few years because uh, this I mean, we don't know what the numbers are going to be, but it's going to be yeah. astronomical. But if, but if we don't get the number, we'll never. I agree. We'll never I know. agree. We never know. I agree. First thing is to get the numbers right, and I think we need to get the numbers on the assumption we're just going to do this project because it needs to get done for public safety and for growth also, but primarily public safety. Get that number, try to figure out how to wrestle with it, what it looks like, <coughs> and then come up with some recommendations and get feedback from the public as to how they want to approach this project in this town. Because I think everybody living on the north side believes it has to happen. They see these issues, they see the concern every day that they're out on the road. And we need to lead the charge to see if we can make this happen. Well, I think, in support of what Alderman Hawk is saying, there was an awful lot of uh, individuals that thought an interchange would never get built. And uh, a lady, dark headed lady, sitting at that old table over there uh, wouldn't take no for an answer and found funding. Uh, and I think that's the uh, approach. Uh, is a match. Uh, I don't think a eight thousand dollar grant or a ten thousand dollar <coughs> grant is is uh, going to fix this at all. Uh, I think Alderman Hawk is correct. The MoDOT has told us, setting right in this very room, that they're in a maintained posture for the foreseeable future and until probably until they get some gas tax increased gas tax relief, uh, we're not going to see any MoDOT-led uh, infrastructure projects. So uh, I, I think we don't know what we don't know. And uh, uh, Terry, I don't know who the firm was that you used uh, or the city used. I was not in office when the uh, interchange was put together, but it seemed to me that those Whoever you used had some pretty good contacts. Um, we used Craw Crawford, Murphy, Tilly, uh, St. Louis. Uh, we chose them originally for the interchange project. Uh, there were two firms that MoDOT gave us suggestions of firms that they felt like were well experienced and had good uh, outcomes with that type of project. We were extremely pleased and we did find that their contacts at MoDOT central office proved to be very beneficial um, in everything from getting our AJR's final approval to getting approval for the MTFC loan. Um, they were very instrumental in helping us get that done. They're also very well versed in uh, providing the information for things like the cost share, which I would think would be something we might pursue in the future. Um, and have been very good about meeting deadlines. Um, even though most people don't believe it, getting the <coughs> project done in the timeline from 
the time we had approval to construction is the speed of light in the government setting um, and they were instrumental in helping us do that so I would strongly recommend that we use CMT for this project as well as our engineer for moving forward yeah, and, and when I when I say we'll get this project done I'm not talking about putting sidewalks in I'm talking about a three-lane road with a turn I'm talking about whatever kind of sidewalk or whatever it is I'm, I want to look at a total concept to do this in the community and get it done um, and then we can figure out how we're going to do it what it's going to look like what we need to alter what we need to change but I think we we shoot for the for overpass we don't just shoot for a road over the highway we shoot for the exchange and everything else that goes with it and that's how I'd like to see us approach this and let's just see what we have let's just see what we, we have and see what the that. people are, are going to support and I think the other thing that's time critical about this is we're never going to have a time along highway 47 where you have more open spaces there's a lot of open spaces and if we sit here and wait five ten years those things could develop that would make the <coughs> easement process more expensive more time consuming but when you have large tracts of land on highway 47 that aren't developed you're not dealing with ten different people on a track of land you're dealing with one property <coughs> owner and this is the time to really do that not let it develop and then figure out how we force it through but get it while well, it's still being developed or when it's at the crust of being developed because I think it will eventually lead to future development if we can push this thing through. So where would your stopping point north as far as road improvements go? How big of a stretch are you talking with road improvements? Probably, tell, probably depends on what your engineering firm Come back to you. But I, you well, know, in order for them to give us we're gonna have to a cost, them. we have to be able to, for their engineering <coughs> piece, we have to be able to tell them what area we want to look at. Well, because I, did, I was not aware that we were going to look at the road piece, so I asked them to give me a potential estimate. I thought we were just looking at sidewalks. So they're going to need to know what stretch we want them to look at before they can really give us a good estimate of what that engineering cost will be. I mean, my initial thoughts on this would be to take the development out to where the ball field <coughs> road is and, and then maybe have them so we could step back and just get to Andorra because once you get to Andorra you got road and street system where people could get through you could even trying to find some way to get to paddock so people living in paddock could walk through to get to a sidewalk so you so want them to take it to North City Road uh, well, I'm not sure. What, is the North City limits where the ball field turns in? Yes. I would say that is pri uh, prime. Second, in my mind, would be to get to Andorra. And would you want to see the sidewalk component standalone cost versus road project cost? Because I think what you're going to find is you're going to have to make some real tough decisions when you get those. And it would be nice to be able to split them and say, okay, maybe we can only do this piece or maybe one we can the, do both pieces. One of the things we heard from the group that was here was that at the very least they thought the improvements should be made on the sidewalks to uh, Fairgrounds Road. And the point was made that we have emergency vehicles, both ambulance and fire, coming out of there. Mm -hmm. You got, the, of course, the, the week of the fair, uh, not that you'd build it just for that. So I think, in my mind, you set up several different uh, distances and project lengths and then see what... Yeah, I, I would concur with that. And I think okay. part of the thing we have to realize is, in my mind, and I'm not an engineer, but we're going to have to get easement that jumps the ditches because a lot of the costs will be not only dealing with the buried utilities but dealing with those ditches that are running with water issues and that and getting the easements even if you put the sidewalk in you have to get a big enough easement to get the sidewalk on the other side of the ditch because there is no room from the road to the ditch to create a sidewalk that's safe so there's going to be <coughs> substantial costs in that unless we get a lot more doctors donating ground but that's where I would look at it. If we end up at a sidewalk only, that's, I think, how we have to look at it. An easement that's deep enough back that allows for a future widening of the road to three lanes in the future <coughs> that allows us to put the sidewalk far enough away from the road that it's not going to be a big issue 
moving forward. Outside well, the current MoDOT right of way right. would be the starting point. Yeah. Even around that, even if it's somewhere in the MoDOT right of way, they've reassured us numerous times, and I believe by email, that if they ever have to do tear up our sidewalk project that we may put in, they will encompass that in the cost and re establish a new sidewalk. They, they said that as part of every one of their projects, that's what they do. Um, and that, that and the only reason I'm bringing that up is just because of what you've said, but that's been a question proposed out there is, or out by pub, uh, the public to me, if if, uh, if we do this project and it's gonna cost us this much money and they just tear it up, then we're out the money. That's not true. MoDOT incorporates that into the cost of widening an area and we'll reestablish those sidewalks for us. I mean, that's where I, I think we should be as a board. We should. We need to leave this. We need to have a bigger vision and see what we can get accomplished. So what I'm understanding you saying <coughs> is that you'd like to see us engage uh, what was it? engineering Crawford Murphy Tilly. <coughs> Murphy Tilly. But, and, and, and it'll be more expensive. But the reality is, the initial board who worked on the interchange engaged an engineering firm for a project that didn't go anywhere for a few years, and people say, "Well, you wasted so much in engineering costs." We didn't waste anything on engineering costs. When that board had the vision to go farther out and do something bigger, that engineering cost stayed there. It was just paid way before the project happened. And I see the same thing here. If we have to <coughs> spend $50,000 more or whatever the number is to the grand vision, we're always going to have the value of that engineering because at some point in time, whether it's in my lifetime or not, that road's going to be widened. There's no question about it. The, the one thing I'd like to say, though, um, to piggyback off some of that, um, instead of just a two, I'd like to see a three. Sometimes with engineering, if, if they do a combined effort, it can give a different cost than just taking the two numbers and adding them together. So I'd like to see the two separate projects and then one combined with all of it done, if we can. Okay. Um, just, I know sometimes when you add that, that third element or that second right. element together, they give a d different cost altogether on the project. So we talked about the meeting about engaging an engineering firm, and we couldn't do it at the work session because we had to do it in the, in the yes. public meeting. Yes. So I'm not sure if you want to go out for bids, do you want to use this firm? How would you like to, to look in the terms of a motion? You can't bid, you, you only go out for qualification. Or qualification, right. Yeah, I see no reason that we would look to another firm. We've had success with this firm. It's a known commodity. Uh, we know what their connection is to MoDOT Central yeah. Office, and we know the value of that. Um, I did ask them to give us a rough estimate, again, not knowing about the road part right. of the project. Um, Just a sidewalk. But to get um, enough information to choose which side of the roadway um, that would be best for sidewalks, uh, to be able to get uh, documents so that we could start trying to obtain easements drawn up. Um, the basic work to figure out what the pitfalls and obstacles are going to be in those areas is about 70000 um, Adding the roadway, it's going to add considerable expense uh, to that number. And what I was intending to suggest was we had $90,000 in our budget, if you recall, uh, we thought we were going to purchase the other piece of property that's on this block, so we budgeted for that. Um, we could easily move that 90000 from that project, which it doesn't look like is going to happen, over to this project in this current budget year, if that's what you all would choose to do, which would give us a start. Yeah, and I would not be opposed. I mean, we, we put in a guesstimate, and this was purely a guesstimate on the budget, $300,000 for the downtown project. Right. We initially started out with, it was, I think, 200 or less, and when we were in the final stage of the budget project, we said, well, if we're going to put in money, we still have unbudgeted money. Let's raise this to 300000 So I'm not opposed to if we have to shift part of that money out to get us a good number, because eventually we're going to have to make some decisions about priorities, because we have limited resources, but staff has limited time also. So if, if you want staff to spend a lot of time and energy downtown and a lot of time and energy down there, it's going to make it very difficult, if not possible, to do it. So us, I, we as a board need to help set up some priorities is where we see. And personally, I have no problem shifting some of that $300,000 that we talked about for downtown over to cover the additional engineering. Okay. 
I guess right now, I know we're looking at a motion to go ahead and proceed, but we need a little more, since we presented three different options, we need a little more of a rough guesstimate on that cost. Is that correct? Well, my suggestion for you this evening is to go ahead and do your vote and see if you've got support to proceed with engineering. If you do, then I will ask them to put together a formal proposal that I will bring it. back to you next meeting. And then we'll know exactly what that number is. That's fair enough. That we're looking for. So we what is the firm again? Crawford, Crawford Murphy Tilly. I make a motion that uh, we have the city clerk. Oh, give me one second. Okay. Guys, I know we've talked a lot over here. Is there anybody over here that wanted to put any input on this? I, I no, I'm, I'm behind everything they've said. Excellent. I just wanted to be able to get the option all over here. Well, I was trying to remember the name of the firm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so I make a motion that we would uh, have, have Terry engage Crawford, Murphy, and Tilly for the purposes of addressing the the North Highway 47 issue as we have discussed in this meeting tonight. Second. Motion made by Alderman Ock, second by Alderman Miller. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Michelle Harvey? Yes. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion carries 6 0. And Mayor, uh, sure. I, I know we're meeting almost every Tuesday <laughs> for the foreseeable future, <laughs> but I believe that a Tuesday evening set aside for the discussion of exactly what Alderman Ock is talking about in terms of priorities uh, on infrastructure to our city makes sense. And so whenever you get to the end of that list, Terry, that <laughs> you've got us on, I'd like you to add another Tuesday. Okay, what would you like that one to be? to uh, set priorities the future infrastructure decisions that uh, the city uh, is going to go forward with okay. <laughs> you kind of it's always ever changing and sometimes it's good to revisit it halfway through yeah. maybe we should call that our planning meeting yes planning which we have not had for this year to move into budget. Okay. Does that Keep work for everybody? Open, folks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Open Tuesdays, I don't know what those are. How <laughs> are open Tuesdays? Do you think this will take the place of the day long meeting at Innsbruck? Yes, I yeah. think this year our plate is full <laughs> enough that we don't need any <laughs> real new directions. Mike's we need to figure out where we're at as we currently are. <laughs> but I think we do need to bring all of you up to speed, let you know exactly, discuss where we're at on all these projects and whatever barriers we've run into so that everybody's on the same page. So I think that's a, a good and idea. And I also think it's important that, we, you know, the, the Tuesday night works because we do have people that are still have jobs. And I think we need to consider that. Thank you for that. <laughs> Scott, you. You I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item we'll be hearing from our Director of Operations and Finance Officer, Terry Thorne. Uh, my only item for you this evening is a request for approval of the flex time amounts for department heads. Um, I think you all have a list. This program seems to be working very well, and they are very appreciative. Of it, um, we have two employees that would be Gabrielle and Larry, who have chosen this year to take the flexible scheduling, as opposed to having the banked flex time. Uh, we gave them that option. I think a couple years ago we added that as an option, um, and then you have the list in front of you of the flex time hours for all the <coughs> other department heads and salaried supervisors. Make a motion to approve the flex time uh, for the uh, listed employees, city employees. Second. Motion made by Alden Shorby, second by Alden Costello. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Michelle Harvey? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. And I just have to say this um, if you don't have a big vision, and you aren't willing to step out there and do it, you will get nowhere. That's how we've gotten to where we are. You gotta step out and do it. So 
I appreciate the fact that all of you are willing to get behind that. Well, I, you know, I think one comment that was made at the meeting by Alderman Costello is priority number one for our government should be public safety. Yes. We can we can spend time on things that are nice and things that are important, but public safety has to be something that we have to be the ones leading the charge on. And that's what this is about. I agree. Any other comments? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next, we'll be hearing from Zoning Officer and Building Commissioner Jack Hanna. Uh, first, I have the monthly building code enforcement report. I would like to point out that uh, we finished a year strong. In December, we issued five single family residential permits, which brought our yearly total to 19, which is really an improvement for us considering in 2015 we had three permits for the year so I, I believe things are really going to get going good for us uh, not only at Bruni but out at Walnut Hollow and different things in the work I see I think our housing is going to get going real strong next year pretty excited about it what were the five at were they in the same development or were they uh, scattered scattered okay. uh, that's good Field of Dreams out at Grody <coughs> and out at Walnut Hollow. So three different individual builders. Man, I think you've got some more coming your way at Walnut Hollow also. Yes. And, uh, hopefully with our end of the month meeting on Tuesday, if this Tuesday, we'll, uh, we'll be able to draw some more. Okay. Yeah, Jack, I don't know. I know it's kind of, yeah, it's hard to, you can drive them to water, but you can't make them drink. Uh, whatever we can do to get as many contractors and builders as we can at the meeting the mayors uh, commenting on you know well, we don't hear from them uh, and what is it we can do that somebody else is doing someplace else that uh, maybe would change things I don't know I still am a firm believer that what happened is four dollar and eleven cent gas in 2008 pretty sure I could hear the air going out of the balloon <laughs> back then and I think we're just now recovering from it so uh, but whatever you can do you, you know you're in contact with these folks um, I, I for one I'd like to hear from you. yep it would be great to have a room full yeah and, love it. and get some real opinions <coughs> and it's obvious with developments as, as positive and as exciting as snooks and the interchange I mean I they see that there's there's action taking place out here and Great. Be good to get in on it. So, very excited. Positive potential. There you go. Any other questions about the uh, monthly building and code enforcement report? <coughs> I, check. I think we've already covered the warranty commons, unless you have something you want to add to it. No, sir. <coughs> We're good. All right. Can, can, can I make one comment about that? <coughs> one of the things that came up that we talked about earlier was this issue of the recommendation for a different type of building material on the side of the building and I think public needs to understand that <coughs> when, a co when a business comes into a C3 zone we don't have very specific guidelines in terms of a look because I think that comment was made by one of the PNZ members well you know we want a certain look well there is no ordinance that, that lays out a certain look in a C3 highway commercial area now, when the dollar, was it dollars, one of the dollar stores? Dollar General. 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 Dollar General proposed a store on 47. They were required to put a brick store in with a certain look. <coughs> the reason they were required to do that is because they chose to move their business into the stretch of Highway 47 where we have those specific things laid out because we want a, such, a certain look when you drive down Highway 47 and come into the entry of town that we have a certain look. And that's why in one case you could require a developer to have put bricks in and to do different things and another developer you wouldn't do that because the code does not allow for us to do that and so there's a lot more flexibility in, in what goes on in the highway commercial so uh, this is not an issue of favoritism it's not an issue of picking and choosing because we can't do that everybody has to be the same it's really an issue of where the development is occurring so I think people need to understand that and that's part of the thinking that's part of I think the reason why the board will approve the motion to <coughs> take off the requirements that were put on the PNC. 
And I, also, he was specifically talking about the fastener system of how it wasn't necessarily the type of material, it was how it was being fastened to the, to the structure. Well, and it was an issue of aesthetics, and I don't yeah. think C3 has any words about aesthetics in there. You know, this is a product, this is a building that's sound, it's an engineering sound, and that's what the requirement is. It has nothing to do with aesthetics. And Alderman Ock, I would just add, our building code does regulate the material and methods of construction. Right. That's what regulates it in this particular circumstance. The R RC district allows us to go into more aesthetics, like you stated earlier, which is not in the C, the commercial district that we're talking about. But our about. code doesn't specifically address no. hangers versus non-hangers. It does not. Look, so <laughs> to yeah. impose that is imposing something that's not in the ordinance. It's not authorized by our ordinance. I uh, sure. have a question for Jack. We're talking about Highway 47 and the aesthetics of uh, what we want to build there and everything. And uh, on your code enforcement thing, it looks to me like right there next to the uh, State Farm Insurance, is there a, uh, some kind of body uh, car repair <laughs> shop going on there? I believe that yellow one's rode up already. Okay. Where he had a blanket on the back window that was broken. Yeah, I, I saw two of them, it looked like two of them on the blocks that one day, so. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me like there's going to be one, it's going to be very colorful. <laughs> Red and yellow. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments for that? Nope. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Maintenance and Grounds Director Brad Buzikers. Hey, good evening, Board and Mayor. Uh, I have the uh, monthly report. Um, as you can see, we've been doing a lot of uh, tree cleanup, and most majority of that's been out at the uh, at the new park, uh, getting some more trails cut in, uh, widening it out for the uh, uh, golf course, uh, trying to make it wide enough to get that in there. Uh, so that's a lot of that. It's kind of weather's kind of hampered us here the last couple of days, but it uh, sounds like we'll be out there maybe tomorrow, uh, get back on it, do some more cutting. Uh, doing, been doing a lot of maintenance on the mowers, uh, same with that up at the cemetery. Uh, been working on headstones and a few other things, trying to get those set up. Uh, the ones that are kind of tipping over, Mark's been work, working on those. Enjoying your time off a little bit? Hmm? Yeah. Well, grass isn't growing much. Grass isn't growing. That's, that's why it is one good thing. We are getting our mowers ready to go. So they'll be ready to, ready to roll when, when it starts well warming up again. Any other questions about the monthly grounds and maintenance report? The, the other thing I have is the... Uh, I think it's on here is the uh, ordinance. Uh, well, I guess it is an ordinance. Oh, yeah, it is. Next question of the, uh, the park closing. The ordinance came up over the uh, the last uh, cold spell. We had uh, one of, uh, actually one of our ba bathrooms froze up, and it was due to the uh, door being kind of ajar. So. I did, did some calling around to uh, uh, St. Charles County, uh, Wentzville, a few uh, other parks and asked them how they dealt with theirs. Well, majority of those, they do not have heated uh, restrooms like ours. They have the uh, composting toilets is what they what they have. So, there, yeah, but there was a couple of them that, that said they do have heated ones, but most of those are up at their facilities that they would, somebody would be there all the time. So. I, I talked to Terry about this, and uh, you know, I, it, it's uh, a lot of them have a uh, an ordinance where they they can shut the bathrooms down, parks down at any given time deemed ne necessary for something would come up, they could do it. And I thought maybe we need to put this in here for a lot of that because it wouldn't take much for somebody to get the wild hair to prop the doors open on 20 below night, and we'd have a pretty good mess on our hands. My, so. my question to this, I guess, is to Chris, is why, did, why can't the city do that just as an operational thing? Why does it have to be put in the form of an ordinance? Great question, because I asked the same thing when Terry asked me about it and Brad asked her about it. 
we don't have to but Terry's response and I think it's a good response is to give the public as much notice as possible so that the public knows that if the temperature is below a certain degree they're going to be closed um, but we also added some language in there to give some discretion if there's some other obvious reason to close the restroom because uh, uh, Terry's comment to me was we try to keep them open as long as possible as year-round as possible so the public can use it and I think they're used to using it so to minimize the imposition of closing the restrooms we want to make sure it's very clear that they can close it at that particular time so that's that's why the request was to put it in ordinance so would you suggest then signage we just, we just put signage up on the bathroom saying closed I mean I, th I think this this was the first time in uh, 11 years that we've ever had to, we've ever had one freeze up but okay. you know it's been cold enough now where it's kind of get Lots common of now so we, we yeah. kind of got to cover ourselves we don't want to have to go through this and I hate to say it, but I kind of agree with the ordinance because if we ever do run into the issue of a complaint or um, just someone wanting to make an issue out of it we can do signage to post the ordinance and post it directly to it so they can read the verbiage that's in the ordinance <coughs> and understand it directly we could but I mean I don't just think we need to do it now I'm just saying I think yeah. it's a good thing to yeah. have the ordinance I was thinking it was just a way for the lawyers to make more money but since he's on a retainer I couldn't argue that point. well like I said I asked the same question I said why do we need to do that it's our property but well it gives us the ability to say to the public if the temperature gets down to zero right or if the winter is <coughs> minus 10 expect it to be closed that way they have an expectation to know when that's going to happen so you'll be working on the one for later presentation it's, it's on, on here thank you anything else Brad? that's all i have thank you <coughs> I appreciate that next word from public works director guy jeevers good evening mayor gordon First item I have is my monthly report. We got some street repair done on Arlington Way, some stormwater work on Banner Avenue completed, we had a water repair on Country Circle. We had a total of four sewer calls. Two are on private and two are on the city side. Any questions? How about that? No, good. <coughs> I'm, you know, I was looking at your report. And my only, it's always nice to look at the year to date stuff or the end of the year stuff. We, you know, one of the most difficult things we deal with on the board is when people come with water running issues and they got this horrendous bill and they want relief. But if you look at the stats for successful high usage calls, 1,075 versus unsuccessful high usage calls only 163 clearly we continue to make that attempt to call the public and say you got an issue in your house because we're getting high readings which i think eliminates the number of people who show up here wanting to relief from their water bill so that's a great great project a great thing to do and then if we don't make contact with the calls we go out to that location and hang cars on the door to do so if we didn't make contact with you over the phone for unsuccessful our wrong number or something like that then we take that list and go out and hang blue cards so people are aware of it it's working the dial my call is really works well that would eight and call in and a lot of times people are oh for, like for thanksgiving well we had a bunch of people over but that's why it's a little higher than normal that they, they think about oh yeah we got more water we use more water so good service yep any other <coughs> questions all right, next item. Yeah. Next item I have is the uh, GN GNSS receiver. This is for um, going out and get our GIS reading. I put in a budget originally thirty thousand dollars for a contractor to come out and do this. Uh, but when we ran into it, if we would have had a contractor come out and get all our readings, now we got new sewers going in out of the interchange. Uh, new sewer out, <coughs> new uh, list station and all that. That would have had to come in and update it again. So with this, pro with, with this project, we can purchase this unit and everything we need for six thousand eight hundred and fifty-five dollars. That way we can do it in-house. 
can go out and get our readings off of that. And that includes fire hydrants, valves, streets, anything that we want to get a reading off of, we can pick it up. We can get it within one foot reading. <coughs> so now we can go out and catch a whole block and do a whole block, get the reading, come in, put it in our GIS system, and download it. And that includes putting information on a manhole, the depth, what it's made out of, all that's got a column for exactly what we need. So if an engineer company comes in and wants to catch how deep a manhole is for a project that they're thinking about doing, we can look on it on GSI, GSI tell them it's six feet deep, concrete. So that's what this item is for. Any questions? All right, I'll uh, entertain a motion to award the GNSS receiver bid to, the, to is it Siler? Guy? That's correct, Siler, I'm sorry. Siler in the amount of $6,855, the only bid? That's correct. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Deloy. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Ock. Yes. Alderman Miller. Yes. Alderman Deloy. Yes. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Alderman Castello. Yes. Carry six zero. The next item I have is for lighting, uh, insulation, and furnace at the wastewater treatment plant. We have a, a building up there that we're going to insulate and heat and put some new lighting in ourselves. I budgeted <coughs> seven thousand. One hundred dollars combined total for all three bids because they didn't we purchased each unit separately is four thousand nine hundred and thirty three dollars and eighty three cents. That's a project that we're going to install the installation, the lighting, have a contract to do the furnace and get that in place. But we are going to do the lighting and the installation. So I need approval for that. Any questions on that? I like your numbers. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion to award the furnace bid to Phoenix Services LLC in the amount of $2,690, the lights bid to Home Depot in the amount of $899.90, and the insulation bid to Hackman Lumber Company in Troy, Missouri in the amount of $1,343.93. All of these are the low bids. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, signed by Alderman Off. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shellhart? Yes. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Motion carries 6 0. Next item I have is a bulk sewer ordinance, and I'll try to explain it to you without confusing myself. <laughs> the, uh, this is an ordinance for bulk sewer out of the interchange. <coughs> Uh, that's the water district. They're going to supply them with the water, so we got a, we came up with a solution for bulk sewer, and this is an ordinance about the bulk sewer, placing the fees, and we're put it, we're going to make it an ordinance so <coughs> when the fees go up on the ordinance side of it, connection fees. We won't have to do another agreement. This is going to combine with the uh, agreement. So if the fees go in in our city code, then it'll go up with the ball, with the uh, agreement that we have with each individual. Did I butcher that or not? Basically, <laughs> it supplements. This ordinance gives a definition uh, that will uh, be applicable to our contracts for the bulk sale of water. Sewer. Sewer. I butchered it. <laughs> Folks say oh, sewer. But this will, these are two definitions that are missing from the agreement that we adopted by ordinance, which our agreements allow us to do. Two butchers in the house. Clear, right? Yes. Thank you, Chris. And we're, ready, we're ready to go to work with notice. <laughs> Any other? Anything else? I have one I have sure. question for Guy. Um, we had spoke last year about the tree removal in Ashland Meadows. I have one of my neighbors had asked me when they were going to get removed. Do we have uh, a timeline? That's coming up in our projects. I mean, we're looking before July. Before I can't July. do no concrete work right now. But as soon as the weather breaks, that'll be coming up. The storm water we can do right now. The any more sidewalks and tree removal, so that'll come up in in the near future to get it ready to go. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Did we skip over <coughs> D? Did we skip over D? That's what we just did. Okay. Item D. It should be the Cochrane Engineering south, south, south sidewalk, South 47. Oh, sorry, you guys got the wrong one. It's gone. It's oh. removed. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. removed? Yeah. Say so it's on this one. Yeah, this, this one. Oh, look at that one. Computer. Yeah, look at the one on the screen. Yeah, some of us have the current and some have the old. It's just kind of useless. Anything else? Just that part. Just uh, the only thing in that ordinance is talks about excessive flow, and that's what that's regarding is if they have what we call I and I storm type freight excessive flow. It, it talks about more than 275 gallons per person, uh, what we call I and I for long term operation problems. So that gives us the address, a ability to address the problem there. Okay. But it's just given the definition of excessive flow because it's in the contract with the uh, water district. Excellent. Any other questions? Questions? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Chief of Police Larry Hillard. But before we do that, I'm going to kind of brag on him for a minute. Uh, I believe there were some things taken back to him from the last meeting or the workshop meeting. And, uh, the way I've heard it on the radio and understood it, um, thank you for stepping up the, the enforcement in that area. This is, uh, that was a few people complained about um, on North 47. So um, no delay in it. You jumped right on it. So uh, I think that needs to be noted, and I think people need to see that uh, we're very serious about this area, and, and so is our staff, and kudos to your guys. Well, and the public should also know that we're doing directed traffic enforcement on that stretch of 47 on all four shifts. So Excellent. Well, I know it's appreciated. It was noted. And, and like I said, there was no delay. So thank you. No problem. I guess I'll let you go to your monthly report now. Good evening, board. Uh, the first item I have for you is my monthly report, which also includes the year-end report for the Criminal Investigations Division. I'd like to give a, some uh, credit where credit's due to Detective Unger if you'll look at his solved cases. It's outstanding. I know I've commented before, but please pass it along. We do appreciate it. I know he's he's probably sometimes <laughs> struggling and drowning, but he's always kind of keeping his head above there and doing good. So Never complains. He's always bringing good numbers to us, and it's impressive when it's just one person doing that. I'm sure he gets help from everybody else, but he's the only one right now in the Bureau. Is that correct? Uh, until the 22nd. That's quite impressive for just one person being in that Bureau. Any other questions or comments on the monthly report? Right, next item. Next item I have is approval for purchase of in-car computers. Uh, the budgeted amount was $36,000. Uh, the bid from a vendor who actually has a state bid came in at $35,017.21. approve the low bid as recommended by the chief. Second. Motion made by Alderman Costello, seconded by Alderman Miller. Roll call vote. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Motion passed 6 0. And the last item I have for you is the first um, general order of 2018 to be approved for interview and interrogation. Questions on the interview and interrogation policy? <coughs> right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, interview and interrogation <coughs> policy. That's a so moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Shell Harvey, second by Alderman Costello. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. 
And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> next item we'll be hearing from our city clerk, Melody Ruth. <coughs> Candidate filing closed today, and there were no new filings since the update from the newspaper last Tuesday. So the only race is in Ward 1 for the two-year term, uh, Tom Booz and Mike Shaw Harvey. Thank you. <coughs> We're at the Bills of Ordinance. So I will entertain a motion for first reading of Bill number 01-18. Before I actually take that motion, the motion. Uh, this is just Sid, so all we got to do is just approve this, and it's fine. I know, but at City, City Attorney Greville, when we get to that area where we need to do the amendment, please help us through You that. want to do it by amendment, Mayor? I figured you probably. I would prefer okay. it. Okay, we'll do it that way. No problem. Uh, first reading of Bill number 01-18. So moved. Okay. Motion made by Alden Deloy, second by Alden Castello. In ordinance of the City of Warrens, Missouri, approving a petition for the creation of the Warrens and Commons Community Improvement District, establishing the district as a political subdivision of the State of Missouri, approving the appointment of the initial Board of Directors of the district, and directing the City Clerk to notify the Missouri Department of Economic Development of the creation of the district. All for second, final reading. Second. Motion made by Alderman Walk, seconded by Alderman Schultz. In ordinance of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, approving a petition for the creation of the Warrenton Commons Community Improvement District, ex establishing the district as political subdivision of the State of Missouri, approving the appointment of the initial Board of Directors of the district, and directing the City Clerk to notify the Missouri Department of Economic Deve Development of the creation of the district. Roll we'll vote. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Bill passes 6 0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number 02-18. So moved. Second. Motion. Motion made by Alderman Ock, second by Alderman Deloy. The zoning ordinance is authorized under Section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, approving a site plan for Warrenton Commons located at 499 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. Mayor, now um, you need to entertain a motion to remove from Bill 02-18, the condition specified that says, with the condition that a sidewalk is added on the driveway from North Hi Highway 47 where practical. So somebody want to make that motion? You could just say, so move. That's what you do with him all the time. <laughs> yeah, you can just say what? Somebody could just say, so move. That's so what move. You all could have physically been doing it. Well, that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for the end of it. Jeez. <laughs> I'm just reading what's in the bill. And he's not getting paid by the word anymore. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the, the, uh, the amendment is, uh, motion is made by Alderman Shaw. Every second by Alderman Mock. Is that correct? Whoever. A zoning ordinance is authorized no, under no, section. It'll be first before that. Is there any discussion on that motion to amend? If there's no discussion, Mayor, call the vote on the motion to amend, and then you In, can call initially. for yeah, and then you can call for the second reading. Is there any discussion? Nope. Okay, we'll call for. Uh, or I'll entertain a motion for the amendment. So moved. Sorry. Wait, that's right. I'm sorry, they already made it. I'm sorry, they already made it. My my apologies. Who gives you this easy? We have not done this that often, so we're kind of. <laughs> the mayor is right. This is the right way to do it under Robert's Rules of Order. I was <coughs> figuring nobody would object, so <coughs> technically we get away with that. Roll call vote for the Strickler. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. The amendment is passed 6 0. So now we go back to the motion to for the second reading of the bill as amended. Second. Motion made by Alderman Costello, seconded by Alderman Jarvey. A zoning ordinance is authorized under Section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, approving a site plan for Warrenton Commons located at 499 East Veterans Memorial Parkway. And we'll call it. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Bill passes 6 0, and I hope you guys understand everything as. <laughs> as much as we do. We have not looked at their vacation later. Thank you. Uh, welcome to our community. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
I will entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 03-18. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schilhardy. Second by Alderman Schultz. In ordinance amending section 230.010 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri regarding notification of park closings. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading on passage of bill number 03-18. So moved. So moved. Second. Alderman Miller, seconded by Alderman Delaware. In ordinance amending section 230.010 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri regarding notification of park closing. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Delaware? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Costello? Yes. Bill passes 6 0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 04-818. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schilhardy. Second by Alderman Schultz. In ordinance amending section 700.010 and 700.040, subsection B of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, relating to excessive flow and bulk sewer connection fees. Entertain a motion for the second reading of the bill number 04-818. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Delaware, second by Alderman Costello. In ordinance amending section 700.010 and 700.040, subsection B of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrenton, Missouri, relating to excessive flow and bulk sewer connection fee. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Delaware? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Shell Harvey? Yes. Alderman Costello? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Bill passes 6 0. And we are at the por portion of adjournment. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for uh, to close the regular board of Alderman. Second. Second. Motion made by Alderman Costello, second by Alderman Hawk. The roll call vote is nine. Aye. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 That is the majority. We are so adjourned, folks. Thank you.